On the 8th of February, renowned Russian chess grandmaster Yuri Averbakh turned 99. He is the oldest living chess grandmaster. At his prime, he was a pretty strong player, cross swords with the strongest players of the era, many of whom he beat. Also, he made a huge contribution to chess endgame theory and wrote many books, some of which became bestsellers. In this video, I want to give credit and uh, cover for you one of his games. In this game, Averbach is on the white side and he's playing against Soviet Russian chess master Lev Aronin. The game was played in 1954 at the second Soviet team cup. This is a game played in round 4 and Averbach opened up with c4. Aronin answered with knight f6, knight c3 g6, e4 d6, d4. With the transposition of moves, we see the good old king's Indian defense. Bishop e2, black castled king side, and bishop g5. Here is what Averbach writes. At that time, the theory of this variation, which later became known as the Averbach variation, was only just being developed, and my opponents tried various plans against me. So, this line is nowadays known as Averbach variation, the short term goal of which is to stop black from going for e5. In the game we see c5, this is the main move, d5 and h6. Usually this is how black is meeting white's bold bishop jump, is playing h6 and then g5 in order to jump in the knight and go for e6. Uh, but black is doing this at the cost of somehow weakening his king's side. Here we have knight bd7, which is a rare move. Theory recommends e6, but instead we see knight bd7. Knight f3, knight g4. Well, uh, this is already too bad. Instead, it was better to play g5, and then rook e8, and then e6. Instead, we see knight g4. Black wants to occupy the e5 square with one of his knights. Already, white is taking under attack this h6 square, and now h3 can be a nice threat. That's why black played king h7. Bishop g3, knight g e5, an exchange of knights on e5 followed. Oops, at this point we see uh, bishop takes e5, sorry, and f4. White is enjoying a very pleasant position, and already there are several problems in black's camp. Right now we have another attacked piece. Bishop goes back on f6, and Averbach castled kingside. g5, this is already a catastrophic move. It was better to play a6 followed by b5 and then knight b6 at the cost of a pawn sacrifice somehow to create a counterplay on the queen side. Instead we see g5 and a very strong move by Averbach e5. The idea of the sacrifice is to open up this diagonal. D takes e5. At this point we first see f takes g5 and after bishop takes g5 we see bishop d3 check. King g7. Queen e2. With queen e4, white wants to penetrate black's camp. Rook h8. With this move, black is covering the h7 square, but moving away the rook from f8 square is making the pawn on f7 vulnerable. And now Averbach will emphasize that fact. d6, e6. Well, if e, e takes d6, then knight takes d6, and then bishop takes e5. Uh, in the game, e6 was played, and knight c7, rook b8, and with his next move, Averbach forced a resignation. Can you find his next move? Ready? Uh, this time we see rook takes f7. Black king is in a mating net. If king g8 and queen h5, queen g6 is coming, and if you accept the peace sacrifice, then anyways, queen h5 will follow and then queen g6, and then knight takes e6, checkmate. So after rook takes f7, Aronin resigned. A quick and confident victorious game by Averbach, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find the winning move for white. As usual, we wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video.